thank you for joining us. I am Gina Ganskop, the Education Director here at the Penobscot Marine Museum. Uh, today's Junior Adventure Program will have some cool facts, craft ideas, and a science experiment. I want to give a big thank you to our members and those of you who choose to donate to support our programming. More information about upcoming programs, membership, and donating can be found on our website and our Facebook page. This programming has been made possible in part by the National Endowment for the Humanities Exploring the Human Endeavor. Please ask us questions and share your comments by posting below throughout the program. Today, we're going to talk about compasses and directions. So let's start with a map. Hmm. Do you know what this is? This is a map of the Penobscot Marine Museum. If you've been to the museum, you might recognize the buildings. This year we're offering guided walking tours. They're mostly outside, but visitors can go into a few buildings, including our boat barns, which house our many small boats. And those are here. Here's one, two, three, four boat barns. And visitors on our walking tours also get to go into our gone fishing exhibit, which is in our old town hall building right here. I am broadcasting to you live today from the Savage Education Center in the Dutch House, which is this yellow building right here. If we want to talk about places, where places are in relation to each other, we use directions. There are four basic directions known as cardinal directions. Do you know what they are? So we have north, south, east, and west and we're, we're gonna go through them. So north, N is for north, and it's this way on this map. So the Dutch house where I am, this yellow building, is north of the Congregational Church, which is this white building right here. South on this map is down, and S is for south. Uh, and it's the opposite of north. The Congregational Church, again right here, is south of the Dutch House where I am right now. East is this way to the right on this map, and E is for east. And so if we look east from the Dutch House, we see this building, which is our library building. So the library is east of the Dutch House. W is for west, and it's going to the left on this map. And so the opposite of east, so the Dutch house here, the yellow house, is west of the library building. So on this map, when you're facing, or on this map, or when you are facing north, north tends to be up, and then East is to the right, south is down or behind you, and west is to the left. Sometimes it can be hard to remember what order these directions are in, and so kind of a fun way to remember it is um, saying never eat shredded wheat. So it goes north, east, south, west, or never eat shredded wheat. Hopefully you can remember it. When you see arrows and uh, let's look at the map again and, and practice. So which building on this map is the furthest west? Let's see. Well, west is over here. So it's on this side. So this building down here is the furthest west, and that's our Main Street Gallery and Visitor Center, and it's the farthest west. What building is north of the flagpole or directly north of the flagpole on this map? So first we have to find the flagpole, and that's right here. And in north is this direction going up this way. So the first 
uh, building that is north of the flagpole is this one right here, our old vestry building. And that's the building we use for educational programs. So uh, like our summer junior adventures program, like this program for young visitors and their families. When you see arrows and directions on a map like this, it's called a compass rose. And sometimes these are fancy. So look at this compass rose and it looks a little bit different from the arrows we were just using. Can you find north, south, east, and west on this compass rose? I will post a blank compass rose in the comments below so you can print it out and color it. And so here's what it could look like when you print it out. There are many more arrows on this compass rose than the four cardinal directions we talked about. And what are the four that we talked about? North, south, east, and west. North, south, east, and west. So, northeast is halfway between north and east. So here, this arrow is pointing to the northeast arrow. And NE stands for northeast on the compass. And halfway between south and east is southeast, which is SE on the compass. Halfway between south and west is southwest or SW on the compass. Oops, wrong way. Here we go. Halfway between north and west is northwest or NW on the compass right there, going in that direction. So now let's play a game. So first we have to figure out which direction is north. Um, if you're not sure where north is at your house, you can think about it and here are some hints. The sun rises in the east and the sun sets in the west. So that might give you an idea of where north is. Um, if it's night and you go outside and there's a clear sky, the north star is part of the Little Dipper and that will also tell you where north is. Um, you might be able to ask an adult and they might know where north is. And another option for today is you can pretend that north is your screen in front of you that would make it a little easier. So we're gonna play Simon Says, but we're gonna play it with directions. Do you know how to play Simon Says? I bet you do, but I'll go through some of the um, rules of how to play. I will be Simon. I will tell you what to do by starting my sentence with Simon Says. If I don't say Simon Says before I give you a direction, you will be out. Point in the direction that Simon says to point. Remember, if you are facing north, north is in front of you. East is to the right, south is behind you, and west is to the left. So let's do a few practice rounds. Simon says, point to the north. If you are pretending your computer is north, you should be pointing at me. Simon says, point to the south. You should be pointing in the opposite direction from the first one. Point to the east. Oh, I didn't say Simon. Did you move? All right, now let's play for real. Simon says, point to the west. Oh, you'll have to make sure you're pointing in the correct direction because I can't see you. Simon says point to the north. Simon says point to the west. Point to the east. Did I trick you? Do you think we can add a few more directions? Remember, northeast is halfway between north and, and east. Southeast is halfway between south and east. Southwest is halfway between south and west, and northwest is halfway between north and west. 
Simon says, point to the northeast. Simon says, point to the south. Simon says, point to the southeast. Simon says, point to the north. Point to the west. Simon says, point to the southwest. This has been fun. You can play at home later with your family and friends. And don't forget to print out your own compass rose. I posted it in the comments below, and you can use that to explain the rules to your friends. So let's look at another map. Here it is. This is a, a map of the world. Um, do you know where the United States is? I gave you a hint by coloring it. What color is it? Did I hear green? So the United States is green. And then to give us another country to talk about, I um, colored this country purple. Do you know what country that is? That is Sweden. So on this map, you can see by the compass rose, north is up, east is to the right, south is down, and west is to the left. So which country is further east, the US or Sweden? So east is here, so which one is over closer to the east? That would be Sweden. And which country is further west? West is going over here. So that would be the United States. And what direction is Sweden from the United States? Hmm, so here we have the US and over here we have Sweden and north is straight up. So Sweden's not exactly straight up and east is straight to the right, so it's not exactly that, but Northeast does a pretty good job describing that relationship. So Sweden is Northeast of the US. But is the world flat like a map? No, it's kind of shaped like a sphere, like a basketball. So I can actually show you with this thing up here. Do you know what this is called? Sometimes we use this to talk about geography and directions, and this is called a globe. So on here, um, do you know what the top and the bottom are called? So like here's the top and here's the bottom of the globe. You know what those are called? Those are the poles. So up here at the top is the North Pole and down here is the South Pole. You can see Antarctica down here. Um, and the Earth has a magnetic field. And uh, at any place on Earth except the magnetic North Pole and the magnetic South Pole, uh, the magnetic field points to the magnetic north field up here. There's a slight difference between the geographic north pole and the magnetic north pole, but we don't need to get into that today. So because of the Earth's magnetic field, we can use a compass to figure out directions. So let's take a look at a compass. And so here is my compass. A little bit hard to see, but we're gonna do our best. Let's see. So we want to line this red part up with the N. Right now the N is over here, so I'm gonna turn it around. Oops, a little bit too far. And you gotta hold it really steady. It'd be better to leave it on the but it's a little hard to see down there, so I'm going to hold it up. All right, so I've pretty much found, lined up the end with the red, and so that means that north is this way. I'll move this over that way. And so for me here, north is in that direction, to kind of to my left, actually. 
Um, so instead of visiting an exhibit today, we are going to do a science experiment. And it's a science, science experiment you can actually do at home. You can, um, you can make your own compass using some really simple um, items. So all you need to make your own compass, for, for tools, you need a pair of pliers and a pair of scissors and adult size scissors are a little easier. And you need a, um, a cork, you need a needle and a larger needle. This is maybe an inch and a half or two inches long. You need a magnet. You need a small bowl. And you need some water, which I put in this container here. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put it back on my hands, spotlight that video. So we're going to start by magnetizing the needle by rubbing it a few times with the magnet. So you take your needle and you're going to run the magnet down the needle and you have to run it the same way. So go top to bottom of the needle, not back and forth. All right. And then step number two, you need to cut off a piece of the cork. Um, you only need about a quarter of it, so right about there. And this can be kind of hard, so you might want an adult to help you with this. And now you're going to, so here's my piece of cork. You're going to push the needle through the cork. And again, this can be a little tricky. Needles are sharp, so you might want to ask an adult for help. So hold the needle with the pliers. And then it kind of helps to put the cork on something flat. And then you're going to push it through like that. OK. Next, take your dish and pour some water in it. Fill it up about halfway. And now we're going to put the cork with the needle into the water and then it should spin a little and find where north is. Hmm. Hopefully your experiment's a little more exciting than mine. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. And we can compare that to the compass. So there you go. You can make your own compass at home using these instructions. And it was really exciting to talk with you today about compasses and directions. And remember, there is that uh, compass rose that you can color in, and that's right below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Please post below in the comments what you liked. Share your pictures if you do make a compass rose, or if you do the compass experiment, that would be really cool to see. Thank you for joining me this week, and we will be back next week for one more Junior Adventurers program this summer.